Hi everybody, welcome back. Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. And what I'd like to do today with you guys is kind of give you a little bit of background history on myself. You know, YouTube is a amazing resource. Uh, just about anything you want to know or find out, you can find somebody talking about it here on YouTube. And that can be both a good thing and sometimes not always such a good thing. So I wanted to kind of uh, give you guys a little bit of a feel for myself, where I'm coming from, what my background is, and what my qualifications are. Uh, as we move forward into some of these more technical videos, you can have an understanding of what I'm about and uh, why I'm somebody you might want to listen to. So I first got my start in heating and air conditioning back in January of 1997. That's when I started my very first HVAC job. Now prior to that I was not a good student by any means. I was definitely not college material. And I know a lot of you folks out there working in the field can relate to that, right? A lot of us ended up in the trades because we weren't college bound and I was definitely, uh, I definitely fit that description for sure. I was a little, I was a little shiftless. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, and I ended up responding to a, uh, a help wanted ad that ended up having, you know, a, a pay scale that was two dollars more per hour than I was currently making. So I thought, heck, I can't go wrong with that. And uh, of a bunch of candidates, I ended up getting the job. And at the time, I didn't realize how lucky I was because, as it turned out, I stumbled upon. Um, the love of my life, my life's work, if you will, in heating and air conditioning. I was lucky that I started with a company who was dedicated to training and uh, building technicians in a very particular way, in a very knowledge-based way. And so my very first day when I reported to work, I reported to class. Uh, the first several weeks was classroom training, and it was very, uh, very intimate, very one-on-one. -on -one. It was myself and one other student with the service manager, and they had a very formalized training process put into place. And I could not have asked for a better start or a, uh, a better teacher to begin with. Very quickly, I became just enthralled with heating and air conditioning service. I come from a long background, a long line, I guess, of tradespeople. My great grandfather was a block mason, a brick mason, bricks and blocks. My grandfather, his son, was a welder and mechanic. And then his son, my father, was a stationary engineer. And uh, so I kind of had working with tools and working with my hands in my blood. And when I happened across heating and air conditioning service, I just ate it right up. And very quickly, I decided it was my life's mission to understand everything I could about it and know everything I could. And it's been my life's mission ever since. Uh, and so I'm happy uh, to be here today. I taught my very first training class in about 1999, which was like, yeah, pretty quick afterwards. And it's kind of an interesting story. Um, at that time, Honeywell had just developed a brand new thermostat called the Chronotherm 4. The Chronotherm 4 replaced the Chronotherm 3 thermostat. And everybody was really familiar with the Chronotherm 3. It had been around for a very long time. Everybody knew how to use it. Well, the Chronotherm 4 had a lot of new features and a lot of new capabilities that no thermostat had ever had before. And as a result, it required some extra steps to set it up. And the company I was working for, we were a pretty big company, and our sales department was including these new whiz-bang thermostats on almost every job. Um, they were selling the heck out of them, and our installers were being challenged to put them in and get them set up correctly. And as a result, customers were calling to complain, which generated warranty calls, which meant the service department, which I was a part of, had to go out and correct that and everybody was confused nobody really understood how to operate these thermostats so one day we had a big interdepartment meeting 
between the installation department, the sales department, and the service department. And uh, the boss said, look, guys, we're having a challenge with these new thermostats. They are great. They're awesome thermostats. Uh, but we're having a bit of a knowledge gap here. And we talked about it back and forth. And, and you know, fingers were pointing. It's not me. It's them. And you know how that goes, right? And so finally, the service manager said, listen, guys, we need somebody to figure this thing out and teach a class on this. Or somebody suggested it. I can't remember who. And as soon as they did that, the, the, the boss was like, all right, who's going to volunteer to do that? And suddenly everybody was like really interested in the floor, really interested in the ceiling. And the conversation started to stop. And for a long time, I, I had heard this phrase where if you really want to learn something completely, or if you really want to understand something really well, teach it to somebody else. And of course, I had recently developed this mission to understand everything I could. So I kind of sheepishly raised my hand and said, I'll do it. The heck, I'll do it. And so uh, I took one of these new thermostats home, took the book, studied it, and developed a little 30-minute training class, which I put everybody in the company through. And it was a tremendous success. And it's that moment when I discovered that I had a really great knack for not only understanding things, but understanding what was important and understanding how to communicate those important things to other technicians. And for many years afterwards, um, even like a decade afterwards, people that were in that class would say to me, man, that was really impactful. I still remember that class. I still benefit from it today. And uh, so that began my technical training career. <laughs> Of course, I continued in the field as a technician and continued rising through the ranks. And before too long, I was became a field supervisor. And I had several technicians kind of under my tutelage, whom it was my responsibility to mentor, to guide. Uh, and that in those days, we didn't have cell phones. We had two-way radios and pagers. And so I was uh, responsible for helping these technicians on the radio and helping them through the challenges that they were experiencing um, helping with direct troubleshooting. And that's how I really started to learn what kind of challenges people face in the field. And because I faced them myself, and I had to help a lot of other technicians through it, and I began to realize that the key to overcoming challenges like that is just a little bit more knowledge and a little bit deeper understanding. And as I continued to progress in my career. I continued to progress in that way to try to develop an understanding. And I still do that to this day. I don't like to teach so much how to do this and how to do that because how to examples really only apply in a pretty limited bandwidth, right? There's a limited scope that you can apply a how to. But if we teach how come and why, that can apply to all kinds of things and help you think through the problem rather than just be spoon-fed how to handle this problem when you see it. That's really not all that helpful. And in the course of doing that, we came across a lot of rules of thumb that people grew up with that were handed down from senior tech to junior tech and on and on and on. And we find out that they don't always work and get to the bottom of how they do work, how things really do work, where the rules of thumb came from, and when to use them and when not to. So anyway... Fast forward ahead, and um, I started doing, uh, you know, I had been doing training like that within the companies that I work for, um, and I started moving up. And so I've held a lot of positions throughout the course of that and been able to see the industry from a variety of different perspectives, right? So I started off at the bottom. I started off as a junior maintenance technician and then moved into service and demand service and into the on-call rotation. Uh, so I've been there, you know, at midnight on, on a roof in a blizzard trying to troubleshoot something or on the hottest day of the year, like 4th of July and uh, uh, get, being out on call, missing time with family, um, putting in the long hours in the uncomfortable situations with the spiders and the snakes and you name it. I've been there and done that quite a bit. So I definitely understand that perspective. Um, you know, and as I grew and moved into more responsible positions, I became a service supervisor ultimately landed in a service manager role, uh, moved into also starting my own business as an independent contractor. I've been a solar uh, PV certified installer as well. Um, and then I decided that I kind of missed doing the teaching. 
and wanted to do a little bit more. And in 1995, I started doing teaching uh, kind of on the side as well as working in the field. I'm sorry, 2015, huh, not 95, 2015. And uh, I started putting out classes that technicians were really, really interested in. And the response was just absolutely overwhelming. And that grew and I turned into kind of, I, I became very quickly at a position where I had to make a choice. I said, well, stay, continue working in the field or pull on this technical training thread and, and see where it goes. And so I decided to pull on the training thread and, and, um, and it was absolutely overwhelming. And so since then I've been doing technical training as a uh, private trainer and, and mentor uh, since uh, 2015. And here we are today, 2020, with the advent of the YouTube channel. So let me tell you a little bit about some of my more um, official qualifications, if you will, and uh, some of the things that I've done in a training and education kind of a role to kind of give you guys a little bit of a, a handle on uh, where I'm coming from. So I am both a NATE certified technician as well as a uh, recognized training provider and Nate Proctor. I have uh, at this point about 23 years of field experience at some of the highest levels of our industry. I worked in uh, both commercial environments and uh, light commercial, residential, uh, everything in between, um, uh, forest air, hydronics, and uh, uh, big systems, small systems, air conditioning, refrigeration, uh, just about you name it. Uh, it's almost easier to tell you what I don't work on than what I do. And what I'm really not much of an expert in is um, uh, control systems, DDC systems, and centrifugal chillers. Pretty much everything else that gets hot, cold, or spins around, um, something that I'm experienced in. I also hold uh, uh, at the, my local building department, I have a Heating A Unlimited license, which is a commercial contractor's license, as well as a Solar A Unlimited contractor's license. And in addition to that, I'm a recognized continuing education provider for our local building department. Uh, here in our jurisdiction, technicians require to carry a technician's license. And in order to maintain that license, they have to exp uh, demonstrate so many hours of continuing education every year and I'm one of the authorized providers for that kind of education. I've worked in both organized union and open non-union shops and I don't necessarily endorse one over the other. Uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of pros and cons to both sides of things but just to let you know a little bit about my experience I, I do have a journeyman status in two different trade unions that is the uh, International Association of Sheet Metal Workers, uh, which I believe has a new name now. It was many years ago that I was involved with them. And also the United Association of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, and Sprinkler Fitters. And uh, in the Sheet Metal Workers Union, I was considered a, I was qualified as a residential journeyman. And in the uh, UA Pipe Fitters, I was a mechanical equipment service specialist journeyman. I've also been certified as a uh, NABCEP certified designer an installer of photovoltaic solar power systems. Now that certification has lapsed. I'm uh, no longer involved in that side of the business, but uh, did achieve that certification and did operate a solar company for a while, as well as design, install, and uh, commission uh, solar power systems from the ground up. As a professional HVAC service mentor and trainer, I have created and delivered uh, hundreds, if not thousands of hours of technical training classes, courses and presentations, and some of which have been commissioned uh, by uh, the following organizations, including the Charles D. Jones Wholesale Supply Company in five of their Colorado locations, Johnstone Supply, whom uh, a lot of folks are familiar with in two of their Colorado locations, the Rampart Supply Company in two of their Colorado locations, as well as uh, private technical training programs for Excel Energy, who is a large um, utility provider out here in the West, um, the Housing Authority of the City of Pueblo, done some training for them, and Vail Resorts 
uh, who you might be familiar with out there in the mountains. Some of the clients that I've worked with uh, uh, in the uh, heating and air conditioning industry include uh, private contractors and independent contractors as well as uh, consolidated contractors across the United States and in the Western US. Um, we have done uh, on-site work. We do uh, uh, private technical training programs for specific contractor clients as well as uh, internet uh, web-based uh, programs serving coast-to-coast -coast and border-to-border. -border. In fact, uh, I was one of the originators or pioneers of distance learning for the trades and doing internet courses for HVAC service technicians all the way back in 2015. Uh, lately, that's become a much more uh, popular thing, hasn't it? In addition to that, I'm also a published author. I am a nationally recognized subject matter expert. I have written articles that have appeared in um, national publications and industry websites. I've written for uh, Snips Magazine. Um, there we go, Snips Magazine. I have uh, written technical articles for Testo Test Instruments. You can probably find those on their website. I have been a guest at the HVAC School podcast and have also appeared in print on the HVAC Know-It-All website. In addition to that, I've also been referenced and um, uh, referred to in a couple of different articles in the HV or the ACHR News, uh, which is our, of course, Bible of HVAC, our, in an, our trade publication. So that's a little bit about me and my background and uh, where I come from. And um, I would love to take the approach of being able to explain how things work and really get into the deepness of it because those kinds of concepts, when well understood, really apply in so many different ways that can really help you out in the field. It's really difficult for a technician to just kind of have this encyclopedia of knowledge in their head. Instead, I prefer to um, uh, ingrain the concepts and the underlying how does this work that can then be applied to all kinds of information as well as a lot of the encyclopedia uh, kind of stuff as well. So uh, thanks for listening. Um, thanks for uh, paying attention to our YouTube channel and look around at a bunch of our other videos um, so that you can find something that you can benefit from out there in the field. And uh, hope to see you again next time. Don't forget to uh, like the channel, uh, subscribe to the channel, and go to the website at www.hvacservicementor.com and look at our other training programs up there. And while you're there, make sure you get on the email list. And every new subscriber on the email list gets a free gift as well as uh, continuing updates and uh, tech tips in your inbox. This is Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor, and I'll see you on the YouTubes.